Good morning, church. Wow, am I excited to be with you today. And uh, we're just going to be jumping into the law here. And some of you might be asking, how can you be excited about the law? Oh, I'm excited, church. We are going to walk through this law together here for Exodus and a bunch of Leviticus. And uh, here are a few things that I think will be really helpful in, in why this law is so exciting to me. So one is that we got to remember the law can be categorized into four, four specific categories. There are ceremonial laws, there are separation laws, there are civic laws, and there are moral laws. And while Hebrews 8 tells us that the law is obsolete, we got to remember that Jesus also said in Matthew chapter 5 that he did not come to abolish the law, but to fulfill it. And so what we got to recognize in that tension is that while there are aspects of the law that are obsolete, like Hebrews says, we can find Jesus on every page of these laws because he has come to fulfill them. And so as you read through these laws, ask yourself, take the time each verse by verse to say, how did Jesus fulfill this law? Or what can I see about God's character in these laws? Because while the ceremonial, sacrificial, and civic laws to a large degree have become obsolete in Jesus, we can clearly see his moral law kind of, I would say in many of those laws, even the ones that are obsolete. So remember that. The second thing is that Jesus' uh, nature is revealed in these laws in a way that we actually understand much more why we need him. And that's important to remember because in the New Testament, if we decide the old laws are, are no longer relevant, we're going to forget why we need Jesus in the first place. And so it is critical that we see Jesus' nature in these laws. All right, so here we go. Uh, chapter 21, verses kind of 1 to 11, we see that there are some slavery laws. And one thing that I want us to recognize right away here is that these slavery laws are not actually saying God approves of slavery. Rather, it is his provision per, for people that are poor in the land. All right. So we got to remember there was no government assistance back in this day. And so how were poor people to take care of themselves if there's nobody to look after them? God provides a way where they can go and become slaves. But he gives clear uh, restrictions and restraints for slave owners and how to treat those people. And so this is actually a neat way of God providing for people that are actually poor that need some help. And then if we go to verses specifically five and six, I just want to outline this beautiful law that we call the bond servant law. And this law basically describes a slave who recognizes my master is so good to me, I actually don't want to leave even though I could. And this is a beautiful picture of how we are meant to be slaves of Christ, like Ephesians 6 talks about. We are called to decide freely, to give up our personal rights, and so that we can follow the Lord. And he says, if you're willing to do that, I promise you can stay in my house forever. Live with me and dwell with me and I will take care of you. Oh, what an amazing picture of what God does for us. I'm so thankful to Jesus that he promises to be so good to us. And then if we look in verses 12 to 36, here we can see some, some protection laws for, for personal injury. And again, remember, this is a society that had no previous guidance in how to handle these things. And you can just clearly see God's heart and his character coming through these laws as we read through them. And it's specifically, I want you to take note about how both parties have responsibilities in these things. It's not just maybe the people that are, that are breaking the law or doing things against God's nature, but it's also those people who, are, who have been wronged. How do you respond in a correct way to those things? So keep an eye on that. Then in chapter 22, we can see some property laws here. And this is important because this outlines the responsibilities of people in, in terms of property damage. And I think this is a relevant thing for us to ask ourselves. Sometimes we can be tempted to try and squirm our way out of and not take responsibility when we damage other people's property. And I want us to ask this question this, this morning or, the, or today, do I take ownership and responsibility for things that I damage when I borrow them? Or do I try and squirm out of the responsibility of those things so it doesn't cost me something? Ask yourself that question as you, uh, as you do your devotions today. And then if we look in verses 16 to 31, we can see some social responsibilities here. And, uh, and again, very clearly shows us God's heart for us to be mindful of how our interactions with others are. And, and ask yourself this question. 
do I remember, do I acknowledge that God sees all of my interactions with the people that I encounter every day on a daily basis? Friends, ask yourself today, when you interact with people, ask the Lord, how can I represent you well in, uh, in my interactions with people today? And when you're tempted to go against God's character in those interactions, remember, he sees you and he is waiting for you to ask for help to treat others the way he would treat them, to respect others the way he respects others. Oh, blessings in your day-to-day church. Lean on Jesus today. 